Hey guys, so I just finished watching Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince starring Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter, Rupert Grint as Ron Weasley, Emma Watson as Hermione Granger, Michael Gambon as Professor Dumbledore, Jim Broadbent as Professor Horace Slughorn, Bonnie Wright as Ginny Weasley, Helena Bonham Carter as Bellatrix Lestrange, and Alan Rickman as Snape. Now, it's the sixth year at Hogwarts. Voldemort's return has been made public. So all the movies leading up to this point, it was just Harry Potter trying to convince everyone that Voldemort is coming back. No one would believe him, but he is actually spotted in a battle at the Ministry of Magic, and there's no more denying it, Voldemort is back. The Order of the Phoenix had taken some massive hits. We lost Sirius Black in the last movie, so at this point in time, Harry is feeling pretty low. There's a number of things going on in this one. One, we got the, the blossoming romance of Harry and Ginny, and also sparks are just starting with Ron and Hermione. Draco Malfoy has been recruited into the Death Eaters. He's been set a very special task by Voldemort himself to gain access for other members of the Death Eaters into Hogwarts via the Vanishing Cabinet and to kill Dumbledore. So things are starting to get pretty dark in this one. Snape is pretty much front and center in this film as well. He is actually the Half-Blood Prince. The Persians book that Harry finds at the beginning of the movie is inscribed as the property of the Half-Blood Prince. And all through this book are dark potions, spells, all sorts of stuff, which really help Harry excel in class. But unfortunately, he also starts to use some of these spells, uh, nearly killing Draco Malfoy in a moment when the two clash. And one thing can be said about Tom Felton as Draco Malfoy in this one. He's not the best actor in the world, to be perfectly honest, but he's playing a very cornered kind of Malfoy. He is got to do something really horrible but you can tell from his portrayal that he's really conflicted about it there are a couple of scenes where he's just really nervous and he does not want to do what he has been requested to do Voldemort has said to him kill Dumbledore or he himself will be killed so he's kind of in a real corner and Snape like I said is actually the half-blood prince so that book that Harry finds actually was his not that the half-blood prince angle really plays a lot in this iteration of the movie the book itself, The Half-Blood Prince, was a real mystery in the book, but in the movie itself, it doesn't really get touched on a lot. So the first time I actually saw this, being big fans of the books, I wasn't too thrilled on this adaption. It was the first time coming out of a Harry Potter movie, I wasn't too happy with what I saw. But in hindsight, having seen the movies multiple times, I there's nothing but love, to be perfectly honest. I haven't actually read the books more than once, so that's something I have to do is kind of dive back into it. But I know that initial viewing that I saw this, I was pretty upset with it. And I also remember when this book was released that there was a big secrecy about J.K. Rowling actually killing off one of the main characters. So that was a big conspiracy back in the day. So when this book was released, people were buying it and just binging it in like a couple of days. Me, myself, when I read a book, I take a couple of weeks. I'm a bit of a slow reader. I read a couple of chapters and go to sleep. But yeah, people just devoured this thing. So when it was revealed that the character that died was actually Dumbledore, spoiler alert, if you've not seen these movies or read these books by now, then what are you doing here? Get off the internet. It was, it was a massive thing. And the death of Dumbledore in this movie is really quite emotional. The scene where Dumbledore's broken body is laying at the base of the tower where he just fell from having just been murdered by Snape and all the students and the teachers, everyone around him just raises their, their wands in, in respect, was just absolutely, was just touching, was really, really, really good. It still kind of got me right in the feels. So yeah, this is the last movie in the series before we go into the two-parter, the Deathly Hallows part one and part two where things kind of built a really big climax. So this is pretty much the last of the standard kind of Harry Potter movies, like Adventures at Hogwarts, classes, budding romances, all that kind of stuff. The scholastic side of the Harry Potter franchise is pretty much going to be just put the rest in this movie, and the next two are just going to be all out adventure and winding things up in a very epic showdown at the school, but we'll get into that one next. Now, the 4K HDR transfer of this film is absolutely stunning, of course. The couple scenes, for instance, in this movie, there's a... A moment where Bella Lestrange and Fenrir Greyback attack the Weasley household. Harry and Ginny take after these two characters as night, massive field, and they end up having a 
one battle in this field and the imagery in this is just striking the inky, the inky blacks are just so dark and perfect and the bright colored fire scenes the one battles everything's beautiful the scene where harry and dumbledore go to the cave to find one of the horcruxes and that's another big key thing too we've got horcruxes in this movie we know what's going on now finally look out voldemort come to get you <laughs> The scene in the in the cave where Dumbledore is drinking the potion and it's, it's really destroying him to get that final Horcrux. And then all these zombie creatures come crawling out of the water to attack Harry. The moment where Dumbledore saves the day, Harry's been pulled into the water, one of the zombies is going to drown him. And Dumbledore's just got his wand and he's swinging it overhead and there's like a whirlwind of flame just throughout the whole cave and he's wiping out the, the zombies and it was just so beautiful the hdr in this movie was just kicking my ass the colors were absolutely striking this movie was crystal clear and the colors were so vibrant and it was an absolutely gorgeous transfer most of these movies like i said in my previous reviews are just striking and i can't wait to see how the deathly hallows look I know it's been a long time since I've watched this series. I've been doing a whole retrospective. My review of Order of the Phoenix I posted in early January, and it's now mm, August. It's now August, so it's been a while. I've just had a lot of movies come and go, so I've just kind of put Harry Potter on the back burner for some reason. I don't know why, but I'm really kind of glad I got back into it because watching The Half-Blood Prince today just kind of reminded me of how good these movies really are. Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grant... Emma Watson have all grown so much as actors over the course of the six, seven years that the Harry Potter franchise has been running. They've become really good performers. Emma Watson, I've just recently watched a movie called The Circle. Crappy movie with Tom Hanks. Really, really bad, but she was good. And Daniel Radcliffe is just doing all sorts of stuff these days. So he's he's become quite a talented lesbian. River Grant haven't really seen a lot of him. But the cast is is quite good and they're always surrounding themselves with some really talented English actors and actresses. It's just a love letter to the English theatre. All the actors in these movies are just top notch and they've just embraced the Harry Potter world so, so much. And J.K. Rowling, once again, has just crafted such a beautiful tale. So rich, so deep, so magical. These films are just a lot of fun. Now, I haven't really been writing any of my previous entries in the franchise. So I won't I won't rate this one either. I'm just going to say I love all the movies. So all up for me, the whole Harry Potter franchise is just a 10. They're just classic films, each and every one of them. And each one is just a smaller part of a bigger tapestry. So the story is just ongoing and it's just so perfect. So yes, the team have learned through Horace Slughorn Dumbledore recruits him to come back to, to the school as a potions teacher because there's something that Dumbledore wants from him and that's a memory of when Slughorn was teaching Tom Riddle when he was a kid at the school. Tom Riddle, Voldemort, was really pumping Slughorn for information about Horcruxes and this is a memory that Slughorn corrupted. Dumbledore didn't have access to it. The memory he had of that encounter was kind of like edited so he really needed Horace Slughorn to come back to the school and he needed Harry to get that memory from him. They did indeed learn that the secret to Voldemort's immortality, Horcruxes, where you can put a piece of your soul into an object and your soul will live on. And in order to break your soul to do this, you do have to commit murder. So Voldemort has indeed killed seven times and broken his soul into seven pieces and hidden in seven horcruxes now skipping ahead a little bit there was a scene in this movie where harry goes to touch the lock which they've just got from the cave and as soon as harry touches it he has a, a moment and he has a flash of all voldemort's history and dumbledore kind of looks at him looks at his scar looks back at him and i think it's at that very moment and spoiling the future movies but I think at that very moment, Dumbledore kind of realises that Harry is indeed a Horcrux. I just picked that up today and I was just like, ooh, very cool, JK, very cool. Yeah! 
Um, David Yates returning as director. He's done the last couple in the series now, and he's doing the next two as well. He's got a really good handle on the story and the, and the actors, and he has delivered a really marvelous film. Like I said, the first time I didn't like this one too much, only because I was angry at the storytelling, but having accepted it and for what it is over the years, as as fantastic it really is. Every one of them is still a really good film. Order of the Phoenix is still my favorite. Everything about that was just awesome, but this is very, very good too. The whole series as a whole is amazing. If you haven't checked out my other reviews, please go and check them out. Um, kind of see how I've, how I've developed over the, over the past year as a YouTuber. Very interesting. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for checking out my channel. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey, she's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. Okay, sorry. Um, kidding.